Well, a very good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bible and Prayer for this Wednesday evening of Holy Week. As we continue uh, through this week, let me give you a very quick reminder of our prayer meeting this evening at half past seven, if you are able to join us. Uh, details uh, have been uh, texted out, but uh, get in touch if you'd like to join us on the Zoom group, uh, that's uh, uh, there for you. And then later in the week, we'll be meeting uh, Friday morning at 10 o'clock for Reflections at the Cross. I hope you might be able to join us there. So this evening we have before us Luke 21 and beginning at verse 25. Let me read that for us. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you will see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening to you, know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things uh, have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. So here we are on Wednesday of Holy Week, uh, Friday very much in sight now. And we have here in Luke 21 a big picture and a small picture to think about for this evening. The big picture, Jesus says, look for the signs of his coming. And we were thinking yesterday, weren't we, King Jesus is going away for a long time uh, before then uh, returning. He's given us the details of how that will be. Uh, and he's told us now what will happen in the meantime, including the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70. Uh, he told us not one stone will be left on another. Uh, and uh, here we uh, now see Jesus, how he will eventually return uh, at the end of that time. Uh, the Son of Man, he says, will be coming in a cloud with great power and glory. Uh, and the world in that time will be uh, a place of anguish and uh, there will be terror. And the message to God's people as he tells us these things, stand up and stay strong. Lift your heads towards your coming king. Your final redemption is drawing near. You see, for Christians, as uh, Jesus returns, that will be a great day. A day when we know we shall be saved uh, completely. And so look for the signs, says Jesus. And be always ready to meet your coming king. That's the big picture. And what about the small picture? Well, the small picture here, look for your betrayer. Jesus is still in Jerusalem by day. He's teaching in the temple courts by night. Uh, he's retreating to rest and to pray on the Mount of Olives. 
And as Jesus does his spiritual work, so Satan is also working with the chief priests and, and the teachers of the law and with Judas, who would become uh, Jesus' Jesus's betrayer. A deal is done, a fee is agreed, and opportunity is sought to hand Jesus over on his final journey to the cross. Not that any of this took God the Father by surprise. In his good and perfect plan to save people, God uses even such evil as well as some great good that Jesus might die in our place and thus become a ransom for many. And so on this Wednesday, we hold together the big picture of what God will do in the future and the small picture of what is about to happen on the journey of Jesus to the cross. Well, let us pray this evening as we consider these things. Father, as we journey with Jesus through this Holy Week, help us be mindful of both of those things, the big picture of uh, your salvation plan for people uh, as uh, you spell out Jesus going uh, through the cross uh, back to heaven and then returning one day. Help us also see the small picture here uh, that uh, of the people and the places that will come together uh, in great evil and yet that will be part of your plan to save people by taking Jesus to the cross. Thank you for that rescue plan for people and we pray you'd help us live today in the light of your promised return. And we thank you that Jesus will return as Lord and King and Judge of all and we pray you'd help us lift our heads that we might be ready when he comes. And we pray this night, Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Friends, thanks so much for joining me tonight. I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. Bye bye for now.